Weight loss drugs are all over the news and social media these days. But what does it mean for us as a life and health industry? Daniel, GLP-1 drugs have been described as one of the most promising advances in tackling obesity. But what does the research tell us? What's the big deal? GLP-1 drugs have the potential to be a real game changer in the current obesity crisis in countries like the US and the UK. We've been observing steadily rising obesity rates over the past decades and now GLP-1 drugs should really mark a trend change and we will likely witness the rise and fall of a decade-long health crisis which is sometimes called the obesity epidemic. Demand for GLP-1 weight loss drugs is currently booming and apart from weight loss they also lower blood pressure, cholesterol and blood glucose levels which are all major drivers of illnesses like cardiovascular diseases. Overall we expect that over the next 20 years in an optimistic scenario Mortality will decline by around 6.5% in the US and around 5% in the UK. Okay, Natalie, you spend a lot of time looking at the big picture. So how serious is the challenge of the obesity crisis for insurers? It's a huge challenge. I'm thinking here of the US where 93% of adults show at least one marker for metabolic ill health. And it's not just about the weight. Metabolic ill health is a risk factor for cardiovascular disease, for cancer, for stroke, and even Alzheimer's disease. It's one of the reasons why we've seen the slowdown in life expectancy gains in many countries. Particularly thinking here about the US, as I mentioned, where 40% of adults are now obese, and that number is expected to pass 55% by 2050. As a physician, I see insulin resistance as the underlying driver of chronic disease. GLP-1 drugs affect these pathways by curbing appetite and increasing satiety. This reduced intake improves insulin sensitivity. They can help break the cycle of poor metabolic health in our modern obesogenic food environment. So Daniel, what do the clinical trials tell us so far about GLP-1 drugs? The, the, the clinical trials show very impressive results. Participants typically lose around 15 to 25 kilograms, and they show strong improvements in blood pressure, cholesterol, and blood glucose levels. But we are yet to see how this really translates into a real-world setting over longer time horizons. The actual weight loss numbers are not that strong. Weight regain is common, and uh, a lot of people seem to stop taking the drugs early. In this ELECT trial, a global study of semaglutide in obese patients with heart disease but not diabetes, researchers saw a 19% reduction in mortality over three years. That's a powerful signal, but only if patients can tolerate the drugs and stay on them long term, or alternatively, successfully taper off them through reduced carbohydrate eating patterns. Variations here can greatly affect our mortality reduction scenarios. Natalie, what drives the uncertainty of the scenarios and how could a potential pessimistic scenario look like? So when it comes down to the scenarios, Daniel, it's going to come down to three main aspects of the drugs themselves. Uh, firstly, the uptake. Secondly, the adherence. And then thirdly, how manageable the side effects are. And then if we add to that the lifestyle modifications alongside the drugs, that gives us a range of parameters to consider for the scenarios. The pessimistic scenario comes down to four main aspects. Firstly, the discontinuation rate of the drugs, which could lead to weight regain. Secondly, the type of weight that's lost is a concern, with up to 40% coming from muscle or bone loss. Uh, thirdly, there's yo-yo use where patients may go on and off the drugs and we don't know what that could mean. And then finally, cost is still very much a barrier until generics become more widely available. GLP-1 drugs work without requiring lifestyle changes, but lasting results depend on behavior. They are not a silver bullet. Their impact is far greater when combined with healthier nutrition, reduced intake of ultra-processed foods and excess carbohydrates, regular exercise, and resistance training to preserve muscle. With the right behavioral support, which will also allow for tapering of the drugs, the benefits of GLP-1s become stronger and more sustainable. 
So, Daniel, how do you see insurers impacted by this and how should they be responding to GLP-1s in practice? There's a clear upside for life and health protection business, lower mortality and mobility rates, fewer disability claims uh, and a healthier workforce. On the short term, however, health insurers will face uh, higher costs because um, many patients will, will seek prescriptions. Uh, overall, underwriting, valuation, pricing, they will all impact it by GLP-1 drugs. And in terms of responses of insurers, we see three broad possible approaches. Firstly, some may take a passive stance by letting data, policy and individual behaviors lead the way. Secondly, some may take a more active role by supporting policyholders with drug and nutrition interventions. And thirdly, some may go all in by offering GLP-1 products and very important also provide the support for lifestyle and behavioral changes. The key is holistic health not just covering drugs, but encouraging sustainable lifestyle change alongside them. At Swiss Re, our vision of metabolic health is built on three pillars, lifestyle behaviors, psychosocial factors, and medical advancements. Tackling all three together is not only a social imperative, but also a strategic priority for our industry supporting healthier lifestyles, particularly correct nutritional advice for those with insulin resistance, addressing social drivers and making the most appropriate use of medical innovation gives insurers the best chance to improve longevity and resilience. It will be critical to follow how weight loss drugs continue to shape the medical and societal landscape. GLP-1s could fundamentally impact health and longevity, especially in the US and the UK. But their success depends on more than medicine. It depends on access, prevention and lifestyle. For life and health insurers, this is a defining moment to step up and play an active role in driving meaningful improvements in future mortality trends.